lived 1896 to 1958. He lived to be only 62 years old. The reason I want to talk about him was because he was a very strong, opinionated person. And as you will see in a moment, but I want to give you his background. He learned in a place called Zivchei Tzedek, which was a shul in Minsk, with 30 brilliant Tamir Chachamim, young people who were brilliant. In 1907, he went to Slabotka and he learned by Rav Moshe Mordecai Epstein in the Alt of Slabotka. And he had an eye for young kids that were going to be brilliant. And look who this Rav Ruven Grzovsky brought to Slabotka. There was somebody was called it? Yankov in a town called Dillenover, and he brought him. No, no, first we in Dillenover, right? And that was Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. So as a bocher, Rabbi Ruvain saw that this brilliant child, Yaakov, had a potential, and he brought Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, he brought him to Slabotka. There was somebody also called Arka of Sitzlovitzer. That was Rabbi Aaron Cutler. Rabbi Ruvain was the one who schlepped him to go to Slabotka. And not only that, Rabbi Aaron had a sister who was not on the level of Rabbi Aaron, who used to write him letters, what are you doing? Come, you learn science and you learn math. And Rabbi Ruvain took those letters and confiscated them and he never even let them go to Rabbi Aaron. He knew who his sister was, he knew the family. And there was one more person that he slept to come to Slabotka and that was a cousin of Rabbi Yaakov and that was Rav Ruderman. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the schus of this Rabbi Ruvain, the schus of him as a young man had the insight to bring Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Aaron, and Rabbi Yaakov Ruderman, he brought them all to Slabotka. I realize that we have to still go to Rabbi Hanach, who I want to talk about. I want to share with you one, two stories about Rav, Rav Ruvain Guzovsky. One, his toughness, and one, his compassion. When he was in Vilna, he organized a demonstration against the Jewish soccer team. They were playing on Shabbos and he was very upset and he organized a big demonstration against the fact that this Jewish soccer team, which was not from, was being Machal Shabbos. He was arrested and the Chavetz Chaim wrote him a letter because he was put in jail for a little while because of this public demonstration. And the Chavetz Chaim wrote him a letter, I envy the schus of your covered Shemayim that you're suffering because you stood up against those who are Machal Shabbos. But I want to share with you a story that Rav Belsky, so Stark, who today is the Rosh Hashiva in Tervedas, told me a story that happened to him with Rav Ruvain. This story happened in 1954. In 1952, Nebuch, Rav Ruvain got a stroke and he suffered for six years until he passed away in 1958. But during the time that he had a stroke, he was in Mansi and he had a room next to Beishmedish Elyon. And what happened was when a new bocher would come to the yeshiva, there was like an initiation. The bocher had to do three things. He had to go to the farm to bring Chol of Yisrael. He had to put away the svarim in the base medrash. And he had to help Rav Ruvain because Rav Ruvain Nebuch was already paralyzed with his stroke. And his body would jerk sometimes and it was very difficult to put tefillin on him. So the new bocher in the yeshiva that was their job. They had to work with Rab Ruvain to say brachas with him in the morning, to hold a sitter for him, to wash him negavasa, and then to help him put on his tefillin. So Rav Belsky told me he was a young boy. He was not married. It was in 1954. And he comes in and he sees Rab Ruvain and he holds the sitter with him, you know, to say the brachas ashachar. But before that, he had to be able to put, uh, wash him negavasa. So he had the shisel, the pail of water, and then he poured water over what he thought was going to be the hand of Rav Ruvain. But just at that moment, Rav Ruvain's hand jerked back and he missed it. And so he poured the water into the pail by mistake. So he decided the second time that he's going to go closer and he'll do it quicker before Rav Ruvain's hand can move. And what happened was Rav Belsky told me, that he quickly, when he saw Rav Ruven's hand was out, he poured the water, but Rav Ruven jerked the hand back and the water went all over the bed and all over the pajamas of Rav Ruven. Rav Belsky told me he didn't know where to bury himself. He was so humiliated. The third time he managed to do it. And he put on the tefillin and he davened together with Rav Ruven, but he just was so humiliated that he had wet, Rav Ruven had wet the bed and the water was all over the place. After the davening, he davened with Rav Ruvain, he was about to leave, 
And Rabbi Ruben says, come here, I want to ask you something. He says, where are you from? He said, I'm from Williamsburg. Tell me about your family, the Belskis, the Wilhelms. And he started a whole conversation with him. And he, Mamish calmed him down. He made him feel special. He asked him, what are you learning? And everything like that. Rabbi Belsky told me he went back to the base Medish Elyon. He was so humiliated, but he was calmed down already. And he told the people the story. And he said, nobody believed him. They said, why don't you believe me? They said, it's impossible what you're telling us. Say, what do you mean it's impossible? So he said, Rab Ruvain Grzovsky, from the time of his bar mitzvah, never spoke with his tefillin. He never spoke out. How could you tell us that he spoke with his tefillin on? And he said, Rab Belsky said, then I understood how great he was. He knew that I was so embarrassed and I was so humiliated at what I had done. But because he didn't want me to feel uncomfortable, he broke a mida teva that he hadn't broken in close to 50 years. But he knew that this bocha would be so devastated, so he made me feel special, and he broke his midah, and he talked out, even though he was wearing his tefillin. That was the godless. On one hand, he was so strong, he wrote a pamphlet, Bayo Sazman, against the, uh, the Medina of Eretz Yisrael, what the Zionists stood for, against Frumkite. And people, they couldn't get over how strong he wrote about it. And he once gave a shear against what the Israeli government was doing, taking the Yalde Tame on the Yemenite kids and putting them in non from kibbutzim. So people went to Rabbi Yaakov, they said, he's giving a lecture on this, should we go? And Rabbi Yaakov said, you could always hear a shear from Rabbi Ruvain, but when are you going to hear Ashkofa? Everybody should go and they closed the Gemaras and they went to hear the shear. That's who Rabbi Ruvain was, a very tough, opinionated person. But when it came to the Ben Odom Lechaver of a young boy, that's how soft and compassionate he was. And that's the Rach Kakona and Kosha Kabarzel, that a person has to have that combination. You have to know when to be strong and you have to know when to be soft. So if everybody has their Tehillims,